looking for magic carps at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd for a 15 percent discount on orders over ten dollars while supporting the channel at the same time hello and welcome to another magic arena upgrade guide today we're taking a look at the monorad starter deck dome destruction first off we'll take a look at the deck list and play game with the deck without making any changes to it and then we will gradually start upgrading the deck first off using all the free upgrades we get from the mastery tree and from the various two color guild decks and then we'll start using some wild cards to further upgrade the deck and then finally we will play some games with the fully upgraded deck as well so let's dive right into it here now Dome Destruction is a little bit all over the place, we've got cards all the way from 1 mana in the form of Scorch Spitter, all the way up to 7 mana with cards like Dracoseth and Meter Golem. So that's definitely something we will address as we start upgrading the deck, as we will start lowering the curve and cutting some of these more expensive cards. But for now they're here, so let's take a look at our entire deck list here. So at 1 mana we've got Scorch Spitter, 1 mana 1-1. One, one. When it attacks it deals 1 damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. Great synergy with a card like Chandra Spitfire, 3 mana 1-3 with flying that says whenever an opponent is dealt non-combat damage, Chandra Spitfire gets plus 3 plus 0 until our turn. So if the Scorch Spitter attacks, deals 1 damage to the opponent, then Chandra Spitfire will get the bonus and attack for 4 damage at the very least, which is pretty significant, and of course works quite well with other burn spells, dealing damage to the opponent. Then we also have two copies of Infuriate, giving target creature plus 3 plus 2 until end of turn at instant speed for just 1 mana, pretty nice combo trick. We also have the full playset of Shock as a cheap burn spell dealing 2 damage to any target, so also plays well with the Chandra Spitfire if we can just point us at the opponent to pump our Spitfire. Then at 2 mana we've got Fire Urchin times 2, 1 3 Trampler that gets plus 1 plus so until our turn whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, so plays well with all those cheap instants. We also have 4 copies of Pack Mastiff as a 2 mana 2 2 with a nice mana sink ability. For 1 and a red, each creature we control named Pack Mastiff gets plus 1 plus so until end of turn, so even if we just have the 1 Mastiff out, it's still a totally fine ability to have in the late game. We also have two copies of Chandra Sparrow Helix, dealing two damage divided as we choose among one or two targets. Great at taking out one toughness creatures from the opponent, while dealing one damage to the opponent as well. Two trigger cards like our Chandra Spitfire, which is definitely one of the build around cards in this deck, and one of the cards that we will preserve as we continue upgrading the deck. Then we also have three copies of Spellgorger Weird, three mana for a 2-2 that says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Spellgorger Weird, so also plays well with all those cheap burn spells. And then we also have the full playset of Goblin Gathering, making a number of 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to 2 plus the number of cards named Goblin Gathering in our graveyard, so the more copies we cast, the better it will scale into the late game. Then we also have 3 copies of Chandra's Outrage, dealing 4 damage to target creature and 2 damage to that creature's controller at instant speed, also great with Chandra Spitfire. And then we get to our curve toppers where we have one Sheevan Dragon all the way from Alpha as a 6 mana 5-5 five five flyer that has fire breathing so we can spend one red mana to give the Sheevan Dragon plus one plus so until end of turn. So another great mana sink to help us close out the game. We also have two copies of Inescapable Blaze dealing 6 damage to any target and it also cannot be countered at instant speed so great way to close out the game as well. And then one copy of Dracoseth, Maw of Flames, as a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven flyer, legendary creature dragon, and deals a whole bunch of damage when it attacks. And then also one copy of Meter Golem, as in all of these monocolored starter decks, a 3-3 three, three creature for 7 mana that destroys target and all land permanent an opponent controls when it enters the battlefield. And then 25 basic mountains as our mana base. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into a game and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got a nice curve out hand with turn 1 Spitter, turn 2 Mastiff, turn 3 Weird, even a Shock has interaction, so can't really ask for a better hand. Let's see what we're up against. Untamed Blood Crypts into Cauldron Familiar, so this is going to be the Cat Sacrifice deck, which could be a tough matchup, my opponent's going to have a lot of answers for cheap creatures in the form of one damage effects. For now I'm probably okay just offering the trade, I could also shock or infuriate, but I kinda wanna get the pack massive out there and it's better to save these instants until after I play the spell Gorger weird. So let's attack. Opponent is okay with the trade. And we'll play Mastiff. It 
it's gonna be a turn two Dreadhorde Butcher, which attacks. So if I block, then I can use the one damage from this dying to finish off my Mastiff. And essentially trade, if I take it, this will start growing. Which is also not a great idea. Kind of a tricky spot. I guess what I can do is take the damage, let this grow up to a 2-2, and then next turn I can still shock it. And if my opponent tries to kill the Mastiff, I can infuriate. Of course, that does mean I won't get the Spellgorger in play first, but I guess that's reasonable still. So yeah, let's uh, shock and see where they deal the two damage. And get in. So not ideal since we had to use a lot of resources there, but uh, we did get rid of the Butcher, still have our Mastiff in play and got in for a bit of damage. Second Red Horde Butcher. Let's see if they still attack. They do. And they've got another play, Food Light Fiend, so that can block my Pack Mastiff, and then the one damage can finish it off. So we don't really have a great attack. So this turn I probably want to just hang back with the Pack Mastiff, hope to trade it off for the Butcher, and then the two damage will not be enough to finish off my Spitfire, hopefully. So let's do that. And otherwise the Spitfire could also just block the Butcher. Which is often is a way for them to sacrifice their creatures, bring back the Cauldron Familiar and Familiar plus which is often is a pretty nasty combination. And they even have the Mayhem Devil as kind of the cherry on top. So now whenever they sacrifice a permanent, it deals one damage to any target. So we're definitely in trouble now. Don't really have any great blocks. My opponent can easily finish off whatever we uh, block with here. But I guess I'm just gonna trade here, trade here, trade off the board essentially. And yeah, kind of see what happens. So now we just kind of have to survive long enough until we get enough mana for Something like Shivan Dragon or Dracoseth to take over the game, since we're not going to get there with these uh, small ball creatures. And we don't have enough burn spells to reliably kill our opponent from 11 life. And the familiar can also start gaining life. Angras Rampage to make me sacrifice the Spellgorger weird. Mayhem Devil deals one to our face and can attack for three. On the bright side, my opponent is empty handed. We're up to five mana, so basically just want to hit some land drops and then eventually draw into our powerful curve toppers. But those might not even be good enough here, as our life total is quickly dwindling as well. Put Light Fiend Sacrifice to the Oven. Two damage total to take out the Spellgorger Weird. And the Familiar comes back by sacrificing the Food Token. Another damage from Mayhem Devil. We get drained for one from the Familiar too, so... A lot of uh, paper cuts here, but they do add up. Alright, Chandra's Outrage is a way to take out the Mayhem Devil. So I'm gonna... Pass a turn here, my opponent likely activates the Witch's Oven on the familiar end of turn. And then I can respond with Outrage on the Devil. Before they do anything else. So at least that's uh, taken care of. But I'm still at 5 here. So the familiar can close out the game pretty quickly. Down to 4. Will be attacked down to three at least. And then drain down to two. Not a land, so... That's not quite gonna cut it, but now I'm technically able to cast my Shivan Dragon. If I draw it. But that's probably gonna be too slow at this point, since... My opponent can just put me to two end of turn. Attack me down to one. Bring back Familiar and... Uh, that's gonna be game over. So we put up a good fight, but the Ragdos Sacrifice deck able to overpower us in the end. 
All right, now that we got to see the deck in action, it's time to upgrade the deck. And first off, we'll start using the upgrades we get through the account mastery tree. Now, you only get to see the account mastery tree if you have a new account. If you've got an older account, then you will automatically have all the cards that you could unlock in the tree in your account. So you just got to search for them, but they should be there. So first up, if we get the Path of Freedom upgrade in the mastery tree, we get one additional copy of Spellgorger Weird, and the game will automatically and uh, Spellgorger Weird and then recommend to cut one copy of Infuriate to make room for it. So for now we'll keep following the game suggestion here. So we'll add a Weird and cut one copy of Infuriate. Next up in the Mastery Tree we get the Fuel to the Fire upgrade which adds three copies of Ember Hauler which is a 2 mana, 2-2 two, two goblin, and for 1 mana we can sacrifice Ember Hauler to deal 2 damage to any target. So a nice 2 drop for the deck. So we get three of those, and then the game will automatically recommend to cut the second copy of Infuriates, so we no longer have any Infuriates in the deck. And also says to cut two copies of Scorch Spitter, which is a bit of a questionable decision. So we will eventually add the Scorch Spitter back to the deck, but for now I'll just keep following the game's suggestion, and we'll cut the two copies of Scorch Spitter. Our next upgrade is called Power Up, and gives us a third copy of Chandra's Power Helix. So we'll add that. We also get one copy of a Dreadhorde Arcanist or Arcanist, whichever pronunciation you prefer, which is a 2 mana 1 3 zombie wizard with trample. And whenever the Arcanist attacks, we can cast target instant or sorcery card with convert mana cost less than or equal to the Arcanist power from our graveyard without paying its mana cost. So, a pretty powerful card, works great with 1 mana cards like Shock since we get to attack with the Arcanist and then get back a shock from the graveyard. Now it is a bit strange that we just got two copies of Infuriate and are adding one Arcanist to the deck since those two work great with each other, since by pumping the Arcanist power we get access to more expensive instants and sorceries from our graveyard to get back. So if we want to focus more on the Arcanist, then we would want to keep some of those uh, pump spells in the deck, but for now we'll just add it and be happy getting back shocks from the graveyard. And then we also get a second copy of Sheevan Dragon as another powerful curve topper. And to make room for these three new cards, the game will recommend to cut three copies of Goblin Gathering, leaving us with a lonely copy of Goblin Gathering, which we will soon cut as well. And the final upgrade from the Mastery Tree is called Chain Reaction and gives us access to a fourth copy of Chandra's Outrage, giving us the full playset. We also get a second copy of Dracoseth. And finally, we also get one copy of Erratic Cyclops, which is a 4 mana 0 8 with Trample, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, the Cyclops gets plus X plus O, where X is that spell's convert mana cost until end of turn. So it plays quite well with our more expensive instants and sorceries like Chandra's Outrage and Inescapable Blaze. So we get one of those as well, and then to make room for these three new cards, we're gonna cut the final copy of Goblin Gathering, as well as two copies of Fire Urchin following the game's own suggestion. So this is where we end up if we complete the account mastery tree and follow the game's suggestion when it comes to upgrading the deck. Now it's time to continue upgrading the deck for free using some of the cards we can find in the two color guild decks that we can also find in the account mastery tree and also upon completing the mastery tree we get the five missing guilds that are not visualized on the tree itself. So first up we get to the Rakdos guild, which gives us a ton of goodies for the deck, including two copies of Light Up the Stage, which is a 3 mana sorcery, spectacle for a single red mana, so if our opponent lost life this turn, we can cast Light Up the Stage for just one mana, and then exile the top two cards of our library, until the end of our next turn we can play those cards, so even if we exile two lands, we can potentially still play one in the turn we cast Light Up the Stage, and then one on the following turn, so nothing goes to waste. And in a deck with a low curve, Light Up the Stage is quite good, since we can often just cast both spells before they go away forever. So a great addition for a low curve burn deck, as we intend to kind of transform this deck and cut some of the more expensive cards, Light Up the Stage is going to become better and better. So we get two of those. Then we also get three copies of Skewer the Critics, which is another spectacle card. Normally it's three mana for a sorcery dealing three damage to any target, but the spectacle cost for just a single rat does the same, so another very powerful spectacle card that is uh, great in a low-curve mono-rat aggro deck. 
So we'll add three copies of Skewer the Critics. In the Rakdos deck, we can also find two copies of Spear Spear, one mana for an O2 Defender, and we can tap Spear Spear to deal one damage to each player. Assuming we're the aggro deck, dealing one damage to ourselves is not that big of a deal. So it's a nice enabler for Spectacle to enable cards like Skewer the Critics and Light of the Stage, and eventually a way to burn out the opponent as well. So we'll add two copies of Spear Spear. And finally, we also get three copies of Footlight Fiend as a 1 mana 1 1. And when Footlight Fiend dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. So, another cheap creature, good at enabling Spectacle. And it's just very important to get off to a quick start when playing a mono red deck. So, it's important to have a critical mass of 1 mana creatures. So, we'll add three copies of Footlight Fiend to the deck as well. Now, in an attempt to lower the curve of the deck, to make room for all these new cards, we're gonna start cutting some of these more expensive dragons. As much as I would like Sheevan Dragon to be a standard playable card, the power level of today's standard just doesn't really allow you to play a 6 mana card that doesn't have some sort of enter the battlefield ability, so we'll have to cut the two copies of Sheevan Dragon. Same goes for Dracoseth, even though it can be a very powerful card if you get to attack with it. Getting to attack with it is usually the problem. Cards like Oko, Teferi, and cheap removal spells like Murderous Rider kind of keep these expensive creatures out of the metagame. So we will just try to lower the curve of the deck and turn into a more aggressive mono red deck instead of having to rely on these powerful finishers to close out the game. So Dracoseth is gone as well. We will also cut Meter Golem. Then we can also cut two copies of Inescapable Blaze, further lowering the curve of the deck. Then it also makes sense to cut Erratic Cyclops, now that we have fewer expensive instants and sorceries to combo with it. So the Cyclops is gone. And then we can also pretty easily cut two mountains from the deck, as now the curve is a lot lower and we can get away with only 23 lands, potentially even fewer lands. But for now we'll just play 23. Next up we get some new tools in the Gruul deck, the Red-Green Guild. Two copies of a Lava Coil, which is a 2 mana sorcery speed removal spell dealing 4 damage to target creature. And if that creature would die this turn, it gets exiled instead, which can also be relevant against a Graveyard Recursion. So a nice answer to some of the bigger creatures that you might encounter in Standard, like Questing Beast or Wicked Wolf if the opponent doesn't have any food tokens out. And then we also get two copies of Clamor Shaman which is not an amazing card, but it's quite good in a more aggressive deck, like the one we're trying to build as a 3 mana 1-1 one, one with a riot. So when we play our shaman, we have to choose whether to put an extra plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, or we can give it haste. And then when the shaman attacks, target creature an opponent controls cannot block this turn. So a nice way to get past one big blocker from the opponent and still get in with our smaller creatures. So we'll add two copies of Clamor Shaman to the deck as well. And then to make room for these new cards, we'll end up cutting the Arcanist, which isn't super synergistic in this deck as we lack the pump spells to increase the Arcanist's power. Great card alongside cards like Feather or maybe in a Gruul deck where we have access to more pump spells. But in this deck, it's not going to be at its best, so I don't mind cutting it. Then we can also cut an extra mountain, as we're going to further keep lowering the curve, so we can get away with fewer lands. And then we can also cut two copies of Spellgorger Weird, as we've just added another 3-drop to our curve, and we don't want to have too many of those, especially now that we have fewer lands. The Blue Red Is It Guild doesn't really offer us any new toys. And then we get to the Boros deck, Red White, which gives us a couple more 1-drops in the form of Goblin Bannerets which is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one goblin soldier with mentor. So whenever this creature attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target attacking creature with lesser power. And for 1 and a red, we can give the banneret 2 additional power until end of turn. So a great way to pump up our smaller creatures and another nice mana sink ability for the late game. Now that we cut some of the more expensive cards in the deck, it's nice to still be able to use up all our mana in the late game. So we'll add 3 copies of goblin banneret. Again, adding more 1-drops to the deck, which is important, as we basically want to have a 1-drop in each opening hand. And we get access to one more powerful goblin, in the form of Legion Warboss, a 3-mana 2-2 goblin soldier with Mentor as well. And at the beginning of combat, on our turn, we get to make a 1-1 red goblin creature token. That token gains haste until end of turn and attacks this combat if able. So nice way to generate a bunch of tokens. And of course, great when going wide, and especially once we add Cavalcade of Calamity, once we start adding some wild cards in the mix, this card is going to shine. So we get one copy of Legion War Boss as well. And to make room for these additions, we can cut the two remaining copies of Spellgorger Weird, which is a bit slow to get going. We don't have that many instants and sorceries, so don't really mind cutting the remaining weirds. 
We can also cut one copy of Channer Spyro Helix, just to kind of shave down on the numbers. We don't have as many cards that care about instants and sorceries. And we can also get away with maybe cutting an extra mountain, as the curve is even lower now. So we haven't had to use any wild cards yet, but we've already been able to improve the deck significantly, lowering the curve, adding more powerful one drops to the mix, and making the deck a lot more consistent, not having to rely on those expensive 6 and 7 mana cards to close out the game. So now it's time to throw some wild cards at the deck to make it even better. First off, we'll go over all the commons we can add, the uncommons, the rares. We won't need any mythics for this deck, so that's nice. And then we'll also go in order of importance, so if there's multiple commons or uncommons we can add to the deck, we'll first discuss the more important ones in case you don't have the wild cards to complete the deck right away. And as I've mentioned before, we will try to build this deck around the powerful 2-mana enchantment, Cavalcade of Calamity, so that's also going to factor into our decisions in terms of which creatures we decide to play in this deck. So first off we'll go over all the commons, and the first common we'll add back to the deck, as we've cut it before, is the full playset of Scorch Spitter. So we should already have two spitters into our account, but now we'll add two more wild cards at uh, common here to get the full playset of Scorch Spitters as a nice 1 mana 1-1, one, one, great synergy with the Chandra Spitfire, great enabler for Spectacle, for Skewer the Critics and Light Up the Stage as well. So just a good 1-drop to start our curve with. Then our next common added to the deck will be the full playset of Torch Courier, a 1 mana 1 1 goblin with haste, and we can also sacrifice Torch Courier and another target creature gains haste until end of turn. So Torch Courier is just another nice one drop for the deck and get in for damage right away, and it's also pretty synergistic with Chandra Spitfire, especially after adding Cavalcade of Calamity to the mix, as we'll be able to potentially play our Chandra Spitfire with a Cavalcade in play, sacrifice Torch Courier to give Chandra Spitfire haste, and then if we have a bunch more one-powered creatures in play to attack with, the Chandra Spitfire plus Cavalcade will make it so we can deal a ton of damage out of nowhere, as the Spitfire will get plus 3 plus 0 for each individual Cavalcade trigger, and of course the Spitfire itself also triggering Cavalcade of Calamity. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself as we're still talking about commons we want to add to the deck, but Cavalcade is definitely the most important card we can add to this deck, and it's uh, just an uncommon, so we'll have to wait a little bit more before we get to it, but for now we can add 4 couriers. And then the last common we can add to the deck is 2 copies of Heartfire, which is a 2 mana instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell we have to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, and then Heartfire deals 4 damage to any target. Sacrificing a creature is not a trivial cost, but we do have a lot of 1-drops that uh, decline in power over time, so we don't really mind sacrificing one of our 1-drops later in the game when they're no longer all that useful. We can also play this at instant speed, which is great if the opponent tries to kill one of our creatures and we have 2 mana available and Heartfire, we can sacrifice that creature instead and deal 4 damage somewhere. Also if we attack with everyone, the opponent maybe has 1 or 2 good blocks, we can simply sacrifice a creature that would die in combat otherwise, and still get 4 damage out of the deal. So it is a pretty versatile card that can give us a bit of reach to help us close out the game, but we don't want too many copies since of course there are diminishing returns to having too many if we don't have the creatures to sacrifice in the first place. But uh, 2 copies is a good amount, and then we can cut the 2 copies of Lava Coil, which is a sorcery speed removal spell that doesn't go to the opponent, whereas Hardfire can potentially burn them out, so we don't mind cutting Lava Coil. Then, to make room for the other 1-drops, we can shave some of the weaker 1-drops we've added to the deck. So Spear Spear can go. We can shave a Footlight Fiend, as well as one Goblin Bannert, which also has diminishing returns, as we can't really spend mana on all of them. And then we can also cut 2 copies of Pack Mastiff, as we have plenty of cheap creatures now with all these 1-drops. Then I'm also going to shave one copy of Skewer the Critics, which can be pretty awkward if you can't enable Spectacle. Also not the most synergistic with Chandra Spitfire, because often you want to be casting Skewer the Critics for 1 mana with Spectacle, but in order to enable Spectacle you often need to attack first, and if you attack first then of course you miss out on the bonus damage from the Chandra Spitfire. So overall I don't mind cutting one Skewer the Critics. And then we can also get away with cutting an extra land going down to 20, as the curve is now even lower. Now we get to the uncommon wild cards, and of course the first card we're going to add is the full playset of Cavalcade of Calamity, and this is a real payoff card for the deck. We've got a ton of one-powered creatures, and whenever a creature we control with power 1 or less attacks, Cavalcade of Calamity deals 1 damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking. Great synergy with Chandra Spitfire, especially attack with Spitfire. Even if that's the only thing we've got going, Spitfire plus Cavalcade means we get to deal 5 damage. 
one from the Spitfire triggering the Cavalcade, and then the Spitfire will grow up to a 4-powered creature and uh, get in for 4 as well. So that's 5 damage total every turn with just Spitfire and Cavalcade. And of course, the more 1-powered creatures we have in play, boosting up the Spitfire, the deadlier it becomes. So this is really the core synergy of the deck and what allows you to kill the opponent out of nowhere if they don't have an answer for the Spitfire lined up. So we'll add all 4 copies of Cavalcade as soon as we can. Then we can also complete our playset of Light Up the Stage as a powerful card draw effect in a low curve deck like this one. Of course, Cavalcade, another great way to enable Spectacle as well. And our final uncommon will be a full playset of 10th Street Dodger as another nice one drop. One mana for a 1 1 with haste. And for a single red, we can make the 10th Street Dodger unable to be blocked except by creatures with defender and there's not too many of those being played in standard so it gives us a nice evasive threat for the late game to get those last points of damage in especially combined with cavalcade of calamity so the tensory dodger will be an upgrade for the most part over some of the other one drops like goblin bannerets and footlight fiends now of course there are plenty of good one drops you could play in a cavalcade deck and for the most part they are quite interchangeable they all have their upsides and downsides for example you could play grim initiate which is a bit more resilient to removal spells even though it lacks haste you could also play ginger brute as another hasty one drop that can potentially become evasive in the late game although there are definitely more opposing haste creatures than defenders so would always play tin street dodger over ginger brute but you could potentially play both although in a second we will add torbrand to the deck as well and ginger brute is not a red card so those two don't synergize uh, very well with each other and if you want to spend some rare wild cards on your one drops you can definitely also add fervent champion to the deck but we're leaving that one out for now to keep the deck a little bit more budget friendly and then our last couple cuts will be the two copies of pack mastiff as they have two power and don't work great with cavalcade at least amber hauler has a bit more synergy with chandra spitfire being able to deal damage to an opponent to trigger the chandra spitfire in the late game so i don't mind keeping those then we can also cut two copies of chandra's pyro helix and we're also going to cut the two remaining copies of Skewer the Critics. Totally reasonable burn spell to include, but I'm going to go without it, as it's not always the most consistent card. Now it's time to add some rares to the deck, and the first rare we will add are three copies of Torbran, Thane of Redfell, four mana for a 2-4 legendary creature, Dwarf Noble, that says if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. This card is amazing, especially combined with Cavalcade of Calamity, because Cavalcade is indeed a red source we control, so for each one of those triggers from Cavalcade, we now deal three damage instead of just one, so that can add up very quickly, and if we have an established board with a Cavalcade in play with a couple one-powered creatures, play Torbran, we can usually end the game on the spot. So we're going to add three copies of Torbran. You could potentially add the fourth, but it is a legendary card, so there are some diminishing returns, and it also costs four mana in a 20 land deck, so we can't play too many expensive cards. But uh, very happy to have the first three, could potentially add a fourth. Then our next rare will be Chandra, Acolyte of Flame, a powerful 3 mana planeswalker. We're mostly interested in the middle ability that lets us create two 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens. They gain haste and they are sacrificed at the beginning of the next end step. Of course making a bunch of hasty 1-1s one great with Cavalcade of Calamity. We can potentially sacrifice those tokens to a hard fire. And then Hardfire also plays great with the minus 2 ability on Chandra that lets us cast target instant or sorcery card with convert mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard. And if that card would be put into our graveyard, it gets exiled instead. So we can maybe get back a Hardfire to help us close out the game, maybe get back a Shock or Light up the stage. All those work just fine. So we'll add 2 copies of Chandra. You could easily add all 4 copies. But of course it is also a legendary card, so there are some diminishing returns. Cards like Questing Beast can potentially take out Chandra in one attack and can be pretty punishing. So I'm okay with playing two copies of Chandra, also just to keep the deck a bit more budget friendly. Then for our next rare I'm gonna add a second copy of Legion Warboss as another nice supply of 1-1 tokens that play great with Cavalcade of Calamity and also just a powerful individual card that can take over the game by itself if it goes unanswered. So we'll add a second copy of Legion Warboss. And then our final rare might just be a land but it's a pretty nice one, Castle Embereth. 
We can play Castle Ambereth untapped as long as we control a mountain, which of course should not be an issue. Then taps for red and also for three and tapping castle. We can give our creatures plus one plus so until end of turn. And of course we can do this at instant speed so we can attack with all our one powered creatures to trigger cavalcade and then afterwards still boost them up with the castle to get in for a ton of extra damage. Sometimes you have a board full of one powered creatures without cavalcade and then castle can double your damage output, especially if you don't have anything else to spend your mana on. So just a great addition for the deck. Again, could easily play all four copies of castle, but to keep the deck a bit more accessible, two copies will do just fine. And of course we can cut two mountains for the castles. We're going to end up cutting all the copies of Chandra's Outrage, as now Torbran is our four drop of choice. And finally we're also going to cut the two remaining copies of Clamor Shaman. It can be nice with Cavalcade as a potentially one power haste creature that still triggers Cavalcade and prevents an opposing creature from blocking. But the other three drops we just added with the Legion Warboss and Chandra are quite a bit more powerful. So we got to make uh, room for those and the Shaman will go. So this is our final list after all the upgrades. So at one mana we've got Spitter, Tin Street Dodger and Torch Courier. So a bunch of hasty one drops as well as the Spitter, which can uh, deal two damage by itself and great synergy with Chandra Spitfire. We've got Shock as a cheap removal spell, maybe take out a mana creature from the opponent or eventually go face to trigger the Chandra Spitfire. We've got Amber Hauler as an okay two drop that can still synergize nicely with the Spitfire in the late game. Of course a full playset of Cavalcade of Calamity which is the centerpiece of the deck. Two copies of Heartfire as a removal spell for bigger creatures or potential finisher. We've got the four Spitfires as our main damage output. Two copies of Legion Warboss to synergize with Cavalcade and as just a great threat by itself. Four copies of Light Up the Stage, which doesn't really cost three mana, but we're usually casting around turn three, turn four to help us refuel. And then two copies of Chandra, which can also get back some instants or sorceries, or just another source of 1-1 one -one creatures for Cavalcade. And then last but not least, three copies of Torbran, which can seriously ramp up the damage output from our deck. And two castles to also help boost up our team. So a very powerful and synergistic mono red deck. Now it's time to add some personal touches to the deck. So we can add the basic land of choice. I'm gonna go with my unhinged lands that I unlocked a while back. You might not have these specific lands on your account, but just pick whichever ones you like. And then we can also change the picture of the deck. And of course we're gonna go with Cavalcade. Change the sleeve up to whichever one we like. And maybe change the deck name as well. Alright, so that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play and we've got a reasonable hand with, uh, of course, Cavalcade, two lands, a one drop with haste and then a couple Spitfires to go with the Cavalcade, so as long as we draw a third land we'll be fine. And let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain into score spitter, so this is the mirror match. Alright, so what's my play? Probably just cavalcade attack, offer the trade. Even though the spitter potentially deals more damage than the torch courier. I'm okay if they don't trade, because we kinda wanna keep the torch courier to go with our Chandra Spitfires as well. So next turn is going to be a pretty important draw step, if I can find a land for one of my 3-drops we'll be able to curve out nicely, otherwise things could get ugly. Opponent's got the Ginger Brutes. Can also be sacrificed to gain some life at some points. Spitter gets in for 2. And we might see a Spectacle card, second main, not sure why the Ginger Brute did not attack, I guess they want to trade with my Torch Courier, which makes sense. Alright, and there's a third land, so that's excellent. So I could even sacrifice Torch Courier to give my Spitfire haste, that doesn't quite seem worth it. Uh, if my opponent has a Shock at the ready, they could kill my War Boss, so I don't necessarily want to play that into one open mana. So I think at the end of the day I'm just going to play Spitfire and I'm going to hold back the Torch Courier so next turn I can attack to trigger my Cavalcade with Spitfire in play. And then if they want to shock my Torch Courier, maybe the War Boss gets to survive. So yeah, let's just hang back and see what they do. Nothing end of turn. 
put a lava coil to take out the Spitfire, sadly. And a Tin Street Dodger as another hasty one drop. Alright, so we might be forced to make a trade here if they attack with everyone. As yeah, so we gotta try and leverage our powerful three drops and just not uh, die in the meantime. So I'm okay trading with the Score Spitter. And then now I could play Spitfire number two. And then next turn play Warboss, so that the hasty goblin token will also boost up my Chandra Spitfire. I think that's reasonable. The upside of playing Warboss while they're tapped out is that I get my 1-1 token guaranteed and they don't get the opportunity to potentially shock my Warboss. It's gonna be a hard fire to take out my second Spitfire. At least they had to sacrifice their Ginger Brute for it. And Dodger gets in for one. And we might see a spectacle card here. Light of the stage, finding a land and another hard fire. So seeing the second hard fire makes me want to hold the Legion Warboss until after this gets played, so the Warboss has a chance to survive. I think I'll do that. Just play Dodger and keep up shock for now. In fact, I could even just shock the Dodger so they don't have a creature to sacrifice in the first place. So that might be the play. And they don't have two mana up at the moment. So let's shock the Dodger. Now if my opponent goes land 5, Legion Warboss, and then still can hard fire with a 1-1 Goblin token, I'm gonna regret shocking the Dodger. It's gonna be a Torbran instead. So at least the Hardfire goes to waste, but of course Torbran, a pretty scary card. So I can play Legion Warboss, attack with a Goblin and a Dodger, my opponent's gonna eat a Dodger. And then play Spitter, or I could make the Dodger unblockable to kinda preserve it, but then they just get to eat a Goblin token instead. How much do we value the ability from the Dodger becoming unblockable is a question. Probably not that much, although I guess we're kind of out of action, so that might be the only thing we end up doing. But if I make this unblockable, then I don't get to empty my hand. So I think I'm just gonna empty my hand here. And my opponent has a chance to block my dodger. And then hopefully Legion Warboss can uh, save the day. If we draw Rowan Torbran, with Cavalcade in play represents a ton of damage. Although there's Chandra. So those 1-1s one are uh, 3 damage each. Opponent doesn't have any cheap spells to necessarily get back right now from the graveyard. So interesting game so far. So Our opponent does still have two cards in hand, so that's uh, problematic. So how much damage is this representing? This is 10 damage total. So if my opponent has a shock, I could be dead if I take everything. But of course, every block I make is pretty terrible since I would lose whichever creature I block with. And I don't get to take out Torbran at the moment. So I think I just have to risk it if they have a shock I'm dead. Or uh, Skewer the Critics works too. Alright, they don't have anything. Another Legion Warboss, so how much damage can I deal now? So I would get 4 Cavalcade triggers, my opponent falls to 8. 1 from Spitter down to 7. And then 3, 4, 5... 6-7 damage exactly. I think we have Xaxes here. All at my opponents. And yeah, opponent falls exactly to zero. And we managed to win the mirror match. Very close game there, needed that uh, Legion War boss top deck or something along those lines to take it away for us. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a totally reasonable hand. 
one drop, two drop, three drop, and then light up the stage to refuel. And our one drop is also quite synergistic with our Spitfire, so... Let's see what we're up against. Blue-green, turn to Leafkin Druid. At least we still get in for one damage here, which is nice. And I could cast a Light of the Stage, but it's usually much better to Light of the Stage once uh, we kind of need to find more action, which at the moment I don't really. So let's just play Amber Hauler. Pona decided to take the damage there with a Leafkin playing around a potential shock to finish it off if they blocked, so they could ramp into Wicked Wolf on turn 3 here. And yeah, that's a good one, but at least they didn't kill my Spitfire with it, which would have been a lot more devastating. So we'll play Spitfire, no attacks, and then hope that the Spitfire survives. If they have a second Wicked Wolf, we are probably done for. It's going to be a Questing Beast instead, another very powerful green card here. So, taking 7, got to hope to outrace here with Cavalcade, which is very much possible since that represents a ton of damage, so... Let's unleash the Cavalcade. And I'm okay sending everyone, even though... One of our one drops is gonna die to the questing beast. And yeah, that's a 16 powered Chandra Spitfire. And our opponent seems pretty dead. Sweet, so despite turn 3 Wicked Wolf into a turn 4 questing beast, Chandra Spitfire got it done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand is potentially very powerful if we can hit two land drops with uh, a one drop cavalcade spitfire into torbrand potentially and whenever we have hands with spitter and another hasty one drop i usually prefer playing the scorch spitter on turn one let's see what we're up against untapped breeding pool into gilded goose Alright, since I'm about to potentially miss a land drop, I think this turn it makes sense to cast Light of the Stage. And I could potentially hit two lands with Light of the Stage, in which case I want to attack first Light of the Stage and then play land of Light of the Stage instead of uh, playing land first. But of course if I play land first I could also attack with a Hasty Torch Courier for one more damage. So it is a tricky decision. I don't think the one damage from Courier is going to matter when we have uh, the combo of Cavalcade, Spitfire and Torbran, so I think hitting our land drops is more important. So I'm gonna decide to attack first here. Point on blocks, line the stage. And perfect, two lands, all according to plan. So I'll play Castle, play Torch Courier. And then next turn, I'll be able to play Spitfire. Now I don't have Cavalcade in play yet, but we can uh, take care of that later. Does our opponent have a turn to Oko? They sure do. And Oko is a problem since that can turn my Spitfire into an Elk. And an Elk deals a lot less damage than a Chandra Spitfire in this deck. It's not poison. Trust me. So what I could also try and set up is a hasty Chandra Spitfire with the Torch Courier. With the Cavalcade in play to maybe one hit KO a Planeswalker from my opponent. Right now, if I play Cavalcade, I can deal 5 damage total to Oko. Which... Could be worth it. And then, at 1 loyalty, we have uh, a chance of potentially killing Oko next turn. So opponent had kind of the perfect start, turn 1 Goose, turn 2 Oko, even a beacon in play to gain a life. And now Kazmina, so this seems like the Teamer Planeswalker deck. It's us for them. I the 
makes a wizard. And, and Oko might end up making a food token. Alright. So Kazmina only makes spells we cast that target a creature planeswalker cost two more. So abilities like Cavalcade don't count. But uh, the shock we just picked up does. So I could just spend my turn shocking this uh, wizard for my opponent. And then I can finish off Oko, leave Kazmina at one loyalty. That doesn't sound like a bad turn. I could also play Torbran. And then... I can use Torbrand plus Cavalcade to finish off both Planeswalkers. They get to kill the Spitter with the Wizards, but maybe that's fine. And then next turn I might have a hasty Spitfire to deal a ton of damage as well. Yeah, let's do that. So it doesn't really matter where I send which creatures, since it's a Cavalcade trigger plus Torbrand that kills them and not uh, one damage we deal. So I guess we'll do this. May we meet again. I will return with even more and I expect them to take out Score Spitter. Alright, so we have Torbran in play. Hopefully Torbran survives. And then uh, we get to play a hasty Spitfire next turn, potentially. Alongside a Shock. Paradise Druid, that's acceptable. And a Grazer. Now Grazer does have reach, so that does block my Spitfire. So I don't have to play Hasty Spitfire, can just play a 1-3. And then Torch Courier trades off for the Paradise Druid, most likely. Yeah, I think just trading off is fine. And then um, I'm probably going to end up shocking the Gilded Goose. So let's attack. Opponent does trade, and uh, Grazer is also chumping here, basically. So we'll shock the goose. And play Spitfire. Alright, and the Spitfire plus Cavalcade plus Torbran represents a ton of damage. This looks like a Sarkon, so that's gonna make a 4-4 Dragon which can jump in front of my Spitfire, but yeah, if we just keep drawing Spitfires, that uh, works for me. Now they could also trade off for Torbran. So if I send a Spitfire at Sarkon, they probably just trade off for Torbran and let Sarkon die. Question is, do I attack with Torbran? I could send Spitfire at my opponent, Torbran at Sarkon. And then they're even more incentivized to trade off for Torbran. So either way, it seems like they're going to trade off for Torbran. So maybe I just go face with both. And then if they want to trade off for Torbran, they take a lot more damage. Sure. Listen to them Watch this. So that trades. Point falls to six. Play another Spitfire. Opponent can sack the food token to go up to 9. But yeah, the two Spitfires by themselves deal enough damage to kill my opponent here. Sweet, so yeah, we got the clean sweep here with some very powerful draws. And really seeing the synergy there with Cavalcade. We were pretty lucky to draw Cavalcade in each game. But it is definitely the centerpiece of the deck. And whenever we draw it, our deck can do some very unfair things. Alright, so that's going to wrap things up for today's upgrade guide. And we've now covered all five of the monocolored starter decks. So if the response is positive, I'll try to upgrade the multicolor guild decks as well. So let me know in the comments which one of those we should cover next. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.